Today, I'm gonna to tell you about some van upgrades I've done. Now, a little over a year ago, I went to Scotland in the Sprinter and had an amazing time. It was brilliant. We went absolutely everywhere. Contrary to belief, no. I didn't do the NC500 because to me, that was a little bit commercialized. I wanted, along with my friends, just to roam around and go to like places that are off the beaten track and that's what we did and we had an absolutely brilliant time just the best time ever but since then i've done quite a few upgrades to the van mainly i've raised it because obviously going down the country lanes my tow bar kept on hitting and that was a great delight to miles from van life uk so what have i done today well my lights they used to have a dimmer a remote control dimmer one of these i'll just show you Bear with, one of these. Now I bought two sets, one for the front, one for the back. But unfortunately, when you press the button, turn them on and off, they all went on and off. So I wanted to control them independently. So in the end, I'll just put them on switch. But, they don't dim. So the other day, I put this little bad boy in. So now I can just press and hold it. And they dim. Now you might wonder, well Sean, that's not that great. But, in all fairness, to me it is. Because now I've got dimmable lights. And I've still got remote control. So I can turn my lights off in the bedroom. So the bedroom's over there. So press the remote control and they come on. And in the back, I've got another remote control which came with these lights that I can turn them off with. So that's pretty handy. I'll just put it back down. It's pretty handy. Oh, what happened there? There you go. So it's pretty handy. I've got two remote controls and both the lights dim. The other thing is condensation. Obviously, I've got the Chinese diesel heater on now because I am bloody freezing. <laughs> What's up, Ted? Calm down, chap. So, yeah, I'm bloody freezing and I get cold feet and the front of the van has started to condensate up. Now, I've got one of these. 25 quid from Screwfix rechargeable but here lies the problem in my infinite wisdom i have no idea what i did with the power pack it's 240 it wasn't until i went on their website and found out that it actually uses five volts to charge it up now if you remember what i did with the echo dot i just cut the wire so i've made <laughs> with another cut wire USB rechargeable so plug it in plug it in there the little uh, power supply or the little charger there we go see if I can get, get the camera a bit closer so I take that off plug it in there's the light it's now USB rechargeable. <laughs> How cool is that? Well, I ain't got to worry about a power supply now and it's easier. So one of those little hacks there, if you've got one of these and you want to make it USB rechargeable, just get another one of these, chop it off and connect it to an old USB socket. Handy little tip. Anyway, so that's that. A bit like Blue Peter, really, isn't it? The other thing is, I've got one of these. I bought some thermal covers. I'll put a link in the description where I got them from. 
Uh, I think they were 125 quid. I think. Yeah, 125 quid. You do get a bit of discount. And good news is, I have made a Amazon store. So everything that I can think of, that I've built this van, is all in there. I'll put a link in the description. It's just Project Camper at Amazon store or whatever it is. I have noticed that obviously you can go on eBay and you can buy all these little switches and stuff like that. Uh, and they're not all that great, are they? So I've been buying stuff from 12 Volt Planet. I'll put a link in the description down there because the parts are far better quality. They are probably a couple of quid more, but to be fair, a couple of quid know that your van's safe and not going to catch fire because some of those cheap breakers uh, a little bit like this that is a 12 volt planet one we all know they're absolute crap so i've replaced all mine from 12 volt planet and they've been brilliant because i have noticed on a couple of vans that i've done some electrical work on that when you press the trip button <laughs> there's still power there so just be warned that any of that chinese stuff i mean it is probably all from china anyway but the stuff off of ebay uh the cheaper ones when you press the button there's still residual current going through so that's not great if you like want to turn your solar off or you've got a breaker on a inverter or anything like that so just be warned Anyway, what's the other things I've been doing? Yep, so I've obviously put the off-road tyres on. Um, absolutely brilliant, I love them. The uh, General Grabbers, uh, AT3s, brilliant. They really are brilliant tyres. You might ask yourself, well, why didn't I go with the uh, BFG? Well, B yeah, BF Goodridge. I just wanted to be different and they are a little bit more cost effective and they do exactly the same thing and they still look pretty cool. So that's what I've done with them. The other thing is, um, there is a couple of bad bits. Unfortunately, my shoreline marine fridge freezer, uh, the thermostat's gone in it. So I've had to bypass the thermostat, but I've got one coming. And the other thing that I'm really, really peed off about is my Wi-Fi aerial. I've got two Wi-Fi aerials. I bought one from WeBoost, uh, so I had to import that from America. So that was quite a few quid. And whilst I was on the roof uh, a little while ago, it's got a spring on it. I thought I'd give it a bit of a clean up because it's a stainless steel spring, because obviously I want to make sure it's okay for winter. Give it a bit of a wobble, bloody water inside. And unfortunately, because I bought it from America, WeBoost don't offer any kind of warranty outside Canada or the USA. So I'm a bit pissed off about that because that was bloody expensive and it's a bloody good bit of kit. But yeah, so fucking annoyed about that to be fair. So yeah, that, I've done quite a lot of updates. I haven't done uh, any major insulation work because I'm going to rely on my Chinese diesel heater. The only thing I have done is, I'll just show you. Right, you'll have to excuse the mess in here because it is work in progress. Now, here is my 300 amp hour lithium battery. And unfortunately, because it's been super cold, it hasn't charged a couple of times because the uh, low temperature sensors cut in. But what I've done, I went to Audi and I bought a heated seat cover. So you can see there, there it is. So at the moment it's it's on low, so off, high, put it back onto low. That is connected up there. Excuse the mess, because I haven't finished it. Just making sure it all works. So it's connected to the AUX beam. So when I'm driving along, I can turn the heater on. That warms the battery up. And in fact, the battery stays quite warm 
even with that turned on good little hack there and then the other thing is up there I've got a transfer pump so all I do connect it to there plug it into there press the button and it transfers diesel from here into there all I do is pull that out I've just drilled two little holes basically so that one stays in there and this one just pulls out of there it goes into there no mess and then I can see oh I'll just get out again so at the moment it does need it's empty let's put a little light on it so you can see the levels right down there just about see it so that needs filling up so I'll do that later back to the uh, battery heater that's what it is 799 from Audi took it out the, took it out of the plastic cover I've got one of these because I'm gonna put this on the front seat to keep my little bottom warm so all I did was place this around the battery and it won't go but yeah, just sort of basically like a bit like that really and it's been absolutely perfect I couldn't believe it because I was thinking oh, I'll put two heating mats underneath and it didn't it took quite a while for the battery to warm up they're only 15 watts so 30 watts but I thought you know what you're trying to heat up a battery that's not going to accept the charge when it's really cold so the best thing I thought was to try and keep it warm and then if it needs warming up I can do that whilst driving on the aux beam control panel at the front of the van and another thing I've done is try to use diesel heater it's got an outlet just down there I think you can probably hear it anyway and I have put another outlet into the back of the garage but to do that that was a right pain in the backside I'll show you So we're in the toilet now and if you can see this pipe here rudimentally just to make sure it works i'll probably get some this is just water pipe and it's just down there at the moment because i obviously haven't finished the toilet shoilet shitter whatever you want to call it so it comes out over in the corner there and then back into the garage and that heats up the garage quite nicely actually it would be, I might get, some, I'm going to get some bigger ducting. I'll probably get the same size as all the Chinese diesel heater. And then I'm going to make a step. So it's all encased. That'd be perfect. Talking about lithium batteries. My 300 amp hour Roma battery. Allegedly 300 amp hour. It's only ever given me, since new, 270, 280 amp hours maximum before it discharges so i'm in talks with them at the moment hopefully that will improve but still on 270 280 amps the van's perfect so i'm not really that fussed about it i've also i'll put a little picture in here because the um victron smart energy or smart battery sense was on the back of the battery and you know the, the uh, lithium battery there's quite a lot of difference in temperature placed on the top and also the BMS inside. So what I've done is I've taken it off the lithium battery and I've put it on the van battery so I can measure the temperature of the van battery and the voltage of the van battery via the Victron app. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Finally, the roof lights at the back. So I bought some roof lights. Um, so I can turn them on via the aux beam switch panel and also as I said earlier I've wired up the battery heater battery warmer Audi seat cover heater that's on there uh, and also I've put a IP68 box on the roof and the way I've done that I'd like to show you, but it's getting quite cold outside and it's getting quite dark, so you just have to take my word for it. 
And what I did, I bought an IP68 box. It's probably about the size of a large max box, uh, matchbox. I drilled a 28 mil hole in it and a 28 mil hole in the roof of the van and a 28 mil uh, waste tank connector. I think I got it from a fish, you know, marine shop. So, I've, tiger seal. It's a structural sealant for windows, so it bonds to metal with the primer, and it's been absolutely perfect. It doesn't leak, and also I can take the top off, thread more wires for it, because I eventually will put lights on the side, rock lights type thing. So yeah, I've been quite busy. Uh, done quite a few updates to the van and I'm really excited because obviously January the 13th which I believe is a Friday so Friday the 13th of January I am leaving to go to Scotland and do some wild camping in extreme weathers so I'm really looking forward to that as I say I went there just over a year ago it's fantastic weather no midges don't like midges. Whew, I'm rattling on a bit now, ain't I? Anyway, so yeah, what else have I done to the van? Not much, really. I've just been going out in it and enjoying it. Um, and I've been doing the little stealth camper van conversion that's not going to cost much money, 100 quid. That's all my boss wants to spend on it. So I've got to do the wiring for that, and hopefully I should start the wiring tomorrow and I'll make a video on that. That's gonna be super, super simple. Basically a VSR from the bat van battery to an auxiliary battery um, and then a little lighting panel and some lights. I've probably got some spare LED lights that I'm gonna chuck in it. Um, we'll see how it goes. Very, very appreciated to the 2000 uh, 900 subscribers now I mean I just like I can't believe it to be fair because it's just little old me doing what I believe is right going to places that I like I went to Stonehenge on the winter solstice met up with a few van lifers there had a cracking weekend and it was great actually because I was reunited with uh, little Sid the transit and I yeah uh, uh, it's just brilliant just as I said, like in a video ages and ages ago, that I was quite upset when I got rid of that van, uh, but it went to a good home. And Zena, she absolutely loves the van, and it's given her an amazing experience. So um, yeah, I, you know, it warms my heart that I know that I gave something to somebody that's helped them out. I didn't do it for views. I didn't do it for any other reason that. Zena's a lovely person and yeah she, you know she absolutely loves the van so yeah I'm well, I'm well happy that I've you know I've got to meet up with Cozy Sid again uh, you know Little Sid Little Sid to Transit because I went everywhere in that van absolutely everywhere and got stuck twice in one week what was I thinking so yeah it's been an eventful couple of weeks I've been doing bits and pieces, been fitting electrics. Um, I've also added stuff to my website. So if you want to see my website, it's www.projectcamper.uk. And also in there is the full website link to Mountain Warehouse. So hopefully some exciting news from them. Mountain Warehouse link is all in the uh, description because they, their clothes are really, really good. You know, I can't fault them. Talking about clothes, and as I said earlier in the video, it is bloody cold out there. So I've got myself some brand spanking new merino wool socks. <laughs> Strangely, they got right and left written on them. So I've got quite a few pairs of them. And the only thing is, when you put them on, your feet are lovely and warm. And then you go to wear normal socks. And it's... Oh, why are these clothes? Oh, trap the, trap the Mountain Warehouse jacket in it. So yeah, Mountain Warehouse clothes, I really, really like them. I can't afford rab or anything like that. 
and the amount of warehouse range is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got a local branch and you can go in there, you can try it on and then you can order it online and it's cheaper. You just need to make sure they fit. Everyone's different. I mean, I bought a super dry jacket and I'm only a medium and it's an extra, extra large. They come up small. So anyway, yeah, totally recommend Mountain Warehouse stuff. It is really good value and it all works. There's loads of reviews on there. Uh, just sift through it. They've got some lovely colors, got some nice, nice clothes. It's all warm and it does work. So that was a little plug from them. They're not sponsoring any videos or nothing like that. It's just, I think it's a really good product. So go and check them out. Links in the description and link in my website. So I think I've rattled on enough. I'm super excited. I can't wait for January, Friday the 13th, where me and the sprinter are gonna mosey back up and get snowed in. I really can't wait. And because I've built this myself, I wanna know if it works. I wanna know if it works in the snow. Will the tires be okay? Will the van be okay? I have made uh, some alterations to the coolant of the van. I bought one of those refractors. So you get a little pipette, you dip it into the coolant, you put it on a little glass and you look through it and it gives you the percentage of the antifreeze and how far it will go down. So I've done mine to minus 55 degrees. So touch wood, the sprinter will be fine. And they have got really good glow plugs on these, there's six of them, so I don't understand why it won't. It should, just, it should be all right. So there you go. A few updates, some little little tricks. Oh, what's happened to that? Close that. So yeah, if you want to keep your lithium battery warm, I have had it on there for probably about a month now, and it does work. You don't I'll say you don't even have to turn this on. It keeps it nice and warm anyway. I think my battery's at like 13, 14 degrees. Does help with. Chinese diesel heater being fired into the garage. Uh, so yeah, rattled on again too much. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Love you guys. And hopefully, see you in Scotland. Cheers, bye.